welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you for tuning in this week. Again, always so glad when you are watching the program. And today we have a bit of a theme for the program today. We're really going to be talking about families, single moms, foster care, and how you, that's a big thing I want to get across. If you've been a long time watcher of Bay Focus, you know I've had a number of ministries on over the years and organizations that, that try to engage the Christian community to become foster parents and, and to really have a heart for the foster care system. And we're going to do that today again, introduce a new organization to the show, uh, to you as well. And then also we're going to be telling you about Shepherd's Village. And this is this is an incredible ministry where they house families and and really try to change lives of single moms and children and also is an arm of New Life Solutions, which we are very familiar with here at CTN as well. But we're going to start talking about foster care today. And we have with us representing the West Florida Foster Care Services. And I, I want to, to mention too that this is a strong faith-based organization as well. So they definitely have a heart for ministry. And we have the executive director with us today, Dan Clausen. Yes, Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having us. And you brought with, with you um, Emma Fisher. Hi. Who is a foster mom, who was right. a foster mom. And then yes. Natasha Pike, who you worked with as, as you the biological mom, and then you guys are connected, yep. and how you both uh, work together to take care of your son, yes, um, Natasha's son. And we're going to hear that story in a moment, so stay tuned. But Dan, start us off. Tell us about West Florida Foster Care Services. Yeah, so thank you, Darlene, for having us here. Um, we are a Christ-centered agency, and our whole purpose is to serve the local body of Christ. And we do that through recruiting, finding foster families like Emma and her family. And then we train them with the curriculum here in our region and state, also affirming the authority of God's word. Mm -hmm. And then our staff actually is able to legally license these foster parents in our region while we proclaim the name of Christ in their home and serve them while they serve children and families because of the name of Christ and his sacrifice. And then our staff will serve them through their time as foster parents. So really our agency is the answer to prayer for so many yeah. families like in our region that say, hey, we're passionate about the church, passionate about God's word, and we want to uphold those things while also supporting organizations that do this work. And really West Florida Foster Care Services is able to do both those things. That's Serve pretty families. amazing in God's Word. Well, and then you have the, the support of the licensing um, organizations in the state and everything to do this and, and yet also minister to families and, and you and, and that is one of the things um, that I love so much about organizations like yours and I've, I've known of a couple others yeah. that do this that try to really bring the love of Christ into it and really um, pr uh, minister to the families and you just mentioned something. Right. Tell us what you do. You said you come alongside and get foster parents in, involved in foster families. What do you do to support them along the way? Yes, yeah, so really our, our support is twofold. One, we never want to take away the call biblically of living out all the one another's in scripture for the local body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what our staff, and by God's grace, they do an amazing job at is serving families working within the system, the legal foster care system. Yeah. And then we really rely on the local body of Christ. And it's amazing to see then that, that group of people to come together to babysit, to give maybe diapers or a wipe yeah. drive, or maybe there's gift cards for a date night. So we really rely on the local body of Christ to do what we all love to do. Yeah and to live out the love one another scripture while our staff serves our families. Because the fact is we are living in a foster care capacity crisis right now yeah, in yeah. our community. Yeah, yeah, I, give, us, give us that. Before we, before we share yeah. the testimonies, give us some of that, that um, those statistics because there's some real need out there. Yeah, so you know, we talk a lot about like the millions of or orphans just like worldwide and then thousands in foster care, but if we look just at the region where your viewers now are hearing this segment, in December there was over 250 children removed from their homes because of abuse, neglect, or abandonment. And we're looking at almost nine children every day. And think about day after day after day, nine children each day removed because of what's going on in their family home. It's not safe, it's not God glorifying, and they need somewhere to go. Our passion through the local body of Christ is to solve the foster care 
capacity crisis, to always make sure there's enough homes for these children to be placed in so they can experience and know yeah. the love of Christ. That, I love that. Okay, we want to put a face on this yes, today. Absolutely. And you brought, you brought just the people to do that. And I, I wanna start with you, Emma, <clears throat> to start with, what led you to become a foster parent? Well, my husband and I, um, we have two kids of our own, and we prayed um, a prayer, just God, open our eyes to the hurting and broken people around us because our life was pretty comfortable and we had you know, friends that looked like us and just on that track. And so he really did um, through um, a church we used to attend, they were really focusing on the capacity crisis and we had no idea. So our <laughs> eyes were really open to the need and so we felt God calling us to step forward and, and begin. So. Um, we did very slowly, um, not as fast as we could have. We kind of drug our feet a little bit, um, not knowing the blessing that we would, we ultimately would receive from it um, personally. And so um, we said yes, and we're so thankful we did. Okay, so you, so have you done this um, one time, couple times, just one time, once? So you've had one. All right, that's one. experience. We're going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Next to you is the um, biological mom of the foster child that was in your home. Yes. Natasha, how did you get to know, how did you start to connect with Natasha? Um, well, about a month into fostering, I realized that I can no longer do it on my own power. And so I, I you know, as a human, I just, as a mom in general, I thought, I, can, I got this. And then when it started to really be difficult to parent someone else's child who didn't want to be with me, want to be with his mom, I, um, I just needed to go back to my agency and to Dan, like he said, the way they support us. Um, just telling me the scriptures all over again of and renewing my purpose in my mind and remembering that it's more about my relationship with the Lord um, and Christ's calling on the church and our lives and the calling that he put in our home. And so instead of just trying to do it on my own and, and do this thing, um, I just reached out to her and I said, I, I have your, you know, your precious child and I, I want to be there for you and whatever you need. And so we just started to really connect in that way on like a daily basis. Now that's part of it too, that you can do that with it, with the foster, foster parent, the biological mom. Let me switch to you, Natasha. <clears throat> you had um, your child placed in foster care. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's, that's tough oh. to start with. I cannot even comprehend what it was at, specifically a Christian foster care home. How did you react to that? Oh, uh, just, just having <clears throat> your child taken period was, was heartbreaking. I mean, you know, he's the, he's the love of my life. Um, it was absolutely devastating. Um, you know, I, I, I initially met Emma with, you know, I, I say, you know, crying my eyes out and, you know, with snotty hands and, you know, immediately when I met her, she, she, she told me, I will never forget, she told me, this is your child and do everything you have to do to get him back. And that told me the kind of person she was immediately and it softened my heart towards her and um, it, it, it impacted me in, in a very in a very significant way um, and you know throughout the time you know getting to know her she she really opened up her heart and her home to me and really mentored me yeah. and um, you know it, it, it meant the world to me now yeah I, I want to you guys connected, and we're gonna. I want to get bring this um, forward a little bit. There was a point then with Natasha Dan yes. that there was a real uh, a situation where it was a life change. Yes, ma'am. And and coming coming to the Lord. And yes. we're going to show a picture here just yes. a minute about baptized. Tell us what happened. Yes, with so Natasha's literally, life. because of Emma and her family living out Christ's sacrificial love, what Natasha yes. saw then was an example of Christ's love. And, and, and God called himself to her through his son, Jesus Christ. Natasha then placing her hope, and now we know her salvation in Jesus Christ because of the, yeah. the love and the sacrifice that she experienced through this faithful family, leading her to proclaim Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and then following in baptism, which I know we have the, the photo show the picture of, of, that. of that day. As wow. That, now that's a family. That's wow. an entire family, yeah. part wow. of the family of Christ. I just, that, that's, that's a tearjerker. Yeah, um, I mean, absolutely. These people, um, the Fishers have become my family. Like, um, family isn't always blood. Right. Um, these people, you know, have wanted me in their life and have accepted me 
and Nicholas, uh, as, as we are, they have prayed for us, they have loved on us, um, I yeah. guess better than my own family have. Yeah. Um, I mean, Emma would allow me to come put Nicholas to bed yeah. um, every night, yeah. and yeah. you know, um, who does that? Yeah. You know, um, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, have put these people in our life for a reason, and I, you know, glorify His name yeah. above all, and I couldn't, this has come full circle, and I, I can't, I can't thank Him enough, yeah. like, you know. Yeah, and, and I, I'm, we're running out of time, we could go so much longer with this, but what I can, what I can say here is this is such a win-win situation because as a foster parent, I've known foster parents too, they get, you, you get attached to that child as well. The fact that you guys can maintain relationship and that you can have relationships with this young man who is here in our studios today um, is just the coolest thing. I don't know how to say that's a That is a God thing. Amen. I mean, you know, only, that only happens when God's involved in, in these situations. All right, Dan, for our final remaining moments here, how can our viewers... How can the community yeah. come alongside your agency? What do you need? So I know we're running out of time. I'll be bold. We just need more. We yeah. need more church partners stepping into this gap. We need more families willing to care for children in their home to be like the Emma Fisher and her husband, Chad, and their family. We yeah. need more churches willing, if you can't take a child in your home, to, to wrap around the families that are. So there's yeah. a reason why you're yeah. hearing the name of Christ more than West Florida Foster Care Services, because his name is the name that we lift up. And if your church or someone from the view, your viewers are watching your church and your family, you want to do more in your community. The capacity crisis can be solved. And if you just visit us on our website, which I believe is on their, on mm -hmm. their screen, yep. we can give them more information. Okay, that is, that is awesome. We're going to wrap up with that. Thank you all for sharing and you're sharing your heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have known a lot of different people involved in foster care. This is one of the best situations Amen. I have seen. And when you see the, the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit put people together and put a family together and the restoration. Yes, wow, I hope those of you have been watching, you're deeply moved with this and will get involved and become a foster parent, become a foster family, or as Dan said, come alongside those that are and help in any way that you can. And I know this also takes resources, takes finances, anything that you can do to, to help the West Florida Foster Care Services as they share the love of Christ through foster care. So um, stay tuned. We're going to tell you about another ministry that helps families as well. In just a moment, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Darlene Greenlee, and I want you to make room in your schedule each week to tune into Bay Focus. We are going to highlight local events, ministries, concerts. Reporter Brooke Larson goes behind the scenes at some of those concerts and talks to the music artists, local pastors, ministry leaders. Tune in each week. I'll see you on the next Bay Focus. Well, I hope you're enjoying Bay Focus today, and we are now going to be staying along the same lines in terms of talking about families and need and, and being restored and, and how God is involved in the restoration business. Uh, but we're going to switch a little bit different direction, and we're going to be featuring Shepherd's Village today. We've had them on Bay Focus in the past, but it has been a while since we've had just Shepherd's Village on. They are one of the arms that we've talked about a Ministry of New Life Solutions uh, in the past that it has the pregnancy centers here uh, in, in the Bay Area, but they, they're also a standalone ministry. Shepherd's Village is a standalone ministry that does their own uh, outreach as well. And to talk about that today, we have some special guests with us. The founder of Shepherd's Village and, and overall director, Phyllis Alderman. Welcome back, Phyllis. And I think it's been a long time since I've had you. I know you've been on Homekeepers. Some of our, our viewers will know you all from Homekeepers, but it's been a long time for Bay Focus. And then also next to her is Susan Lavario, who is the associate director there at Shepherd's Village. And next to you is April McKnight, 
who is uh, Administrator and Community Outreach Director. Thank you all for coming on today. And I'm going to start with you, Phyllis, because we may have okay. viewers that, that are tuning in for the first time and have, don't know anything about Shepherd's Village. Tell us the background on Shepherd's Village. Well, Shepherd's Village is just a God miracle. Yeah. Uh, it started in 1992, and the focus was to restore hope for single mother families that are struggling. And we, we just had a passion to help them uh, find a hope and a future as God promised. And yeah. so um, as we were looking at how we could do that, a miracle occurred and a very generous gentleman in Pinellas County offered us the equity in a apartment building in Clearwater. And um, over a cup of coffee and uh, a quick signature, we suddenly had a mortgage, had to, had to recruit a um, a board of directors and volunteers that would begin to renovate the building. And in 1992 to, to this present date, we've been able to serve a little over 285 families that have had affordable housing for a two to three year period. Mm -hmm. That's been the foundation of the vision. But beyond that, what we've done is be able to bring hope to the families through programs and services and events. And we've reached an additional 10,000 families that are non-resident. And that has just been uh, what we call a story behind every door. Yeah. So uh, there's families that have come from uh, living behind uh, in the back, back door of a floor shop, uh, living in their car. Uh, others that have just uh, been making, going what we call down the slippery slope. Oftentimes when a single mother is suddenly single, their family yeah. life changes four times in the first year, meaning that the children move from home to home, from school to school, neighborhood to neighborhood, and the instability is just making them hopeless and very discouraging. Yeah. So we've been able to come alongside those. Our goal is two generations at a time. So we focus on mom, we focus on the children, and with the advantage mm -hmm. of 26 years of history, we are able now to look at children that have grown, that are stable, because God allowed mom to find sustainable yeah, yeah. stability in the Word of God. Uh, w we work through discipleship programs, uh, special equipping, life skill programs, Bible studies, prayer groups, but uh, God has been amazing. Yeah. From our very first little, little child that was standing in the doorway as the first apartment was being renovated, I'll never forget her standing there looking between the legs of a gentleman that was uh, <laughs> trying to keep all of us out of the unit while the work was done. And she just said, Mom, it's beautiful. And Aww. so we wanted God to be able to show off to families yeah. and to be able to show them that he is the father of the fatherless. Yeah. And yeah. so it, um, it's a cry out to God's people to fulfill the scripture that pure and undefiled religion in the sight of God, letting him see what we do is being able to care for the widows and the orphans. Yeah. Um, well, the fact that you've been doing this for as many years as you have, um, and then to join forces with, with New Life Solutions, really who, who they are saving babies and pointing moms to your direction right. that need help. And um, Susan, tell me as Associate Director on, on your involvement in it, what are some of the specific um, things? She's mentioning things in general that you do, but give us a little bit more of the day-to-day, -day, what well, happens with these ladies. These are all single moms, are these all? Yes, they're all single moms, but okay. you have to be working. And we, we have so many that apply, 45 a month. Mm -hmm. We get calls or emails, just single moms looking for a place to, to live. And we're listening for their heart. Where are they wanting to move forward? They do have to be working, and it's, it's the heart of their child, that they're, they're front and foremost need right there and uh, they're when they come into Shepherd's Village they are scared and, and hopeless and yeah. um, they're just looking for encouragement and a hand up they we're not there to give them a hand out but we just want to lift them up and encourage yeah. them and uh, so there's so many programs through divorce care we we offer um, single and parenting uh, Phil, or, uh, April and her husband helped teach that, and we offer classes on 
every second and fourth Tuesday evening. Mm -hmm. So we're putting those tools in their hands to help them move forward. And when, by the time they move out uh, their second or third year, they're self-sustainable and they're moving forward. And um, we've had, I was trying to pick out just a few moms that I could quickly tell you about. And uh, uh, one of the moms just graduated with her RN degree and uh, uh -huh. just became saved. Uh, a few months ago, her and her daughter did, and they are just so thrilled to be living at Shepherd's Village, and they're thriving and growing. And then we have another mom that has two little boys, and she purposely wanted to work at a daycare center where she could be close to her, her boys, and she just enrolled in St. Pete College and is, is moving forward to get her directorship, and uh, she co-parents with her, her children's dad and mm -hmm. she has to drive every other weekend to Georgia to drop the children off and so yeah. it's she drives in her little 2008 vehicle and uh, yeah. it's it's very tough on them but they are moving forward yeah. and really working hard. Yeah well th this is a, a great testament that all those have come through and 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 the testimonies but I think we have one sitting right here too mm -hmm. <laughs> because April you are actually been you were one a single mom I was. Yeah, I what's was. your experience there? Two and a half years ago, I found myself um, in a divorce situation, leaving an abusive situation with three teenagers and no family, no place to go. And Shepherd's Village, because I was involved in my local church, was a resource that was, was given to me. Um, and, you know, one of the things we, we want to talk about with that is that, you know, these moms that are single moms in Pinellas County, 85% of the 60,000 single moms in Pinellas County will never step foot into a church. So we really have yeah. to be creative on how we're going to reach yeah, them. Yeah, that's good. Um, because I was only part of the 15% that, that do know about it because of a church. Um, but there wasn't an opening when I needed it. Um, but I was at a place where I needed some resources, and I called Phyllis and said, what do I do? I'm at a place, I'm broken. And she said, attend Celebrate Recovery, get an appointment within a counselor and read this book, Boundaries and Marriage. And I did those things because I, I wanted to move forward. Um, three months later, there was a, an opening at Shepherd's Village and we were so privileged to have the first remodeled two bedroom fully furnished because we left with our car and our clothes. Yeah. And it was an amazing experience. And for two and a half years, it changed my life. It gave me hope and healing and consistency and a safe place that my kids could now see and have a future. Wow, wow, what a just testimony, amazing. And now to see you working with mm -hmm. the ministry. So now let me have you put that hat on. Now is your, yes. what, well, you're, you've got some big plans for the future. So tell we, us what you guys are doing. We do. You know, like I said, um, in our research, um, you know, there's, we've identified out of the 60,000 single moms in Pinellas County that there's really probably 11,000. We've nicknamed them our patties of Pinellas County that, you know, want to connect with community that really fit that profile of the synergy that our housing ministry brings and we really want to reach them right where they're at because if they're not stepping foot into our local church you know most of the single moms if they can not afford maybe their car they at least have a cell phone and so they can get on that cell phone at 10 11 o'clock at night when they're exhausted and they finally got the kids to bed and they can look for that blog article on how do I raise my teenager or how do I get to the end of the day or that faith question of how did I get to where I'm at today and why is my life so messed up and realize that you know Jeremiah 29 11 says that you know God has plans for them to give them a hope in a future and even though they might have made some wrong choices along the way we want to give them that that salvation message yeah. we want to give them that hope yeah. that that God knows and we're gonna do that right from their cell phone by targeting those moms in Pinellas County um, encouraging them to get involved in a local church in single and parenting and divorce care and really offer them a mentor um, and give them the resources that we give our, our moms in our campus right now online so we can reach them right where they're oh, at. And I love that that is a taking it outside of just mm -hmm. your location taking it to to them. Yes. All right, Phyllis, in our uh, last couple moments, there's a, a lot that you have to do on a day to day, and then even for this future emphasis and, and trying to reach these people. How can our viewers ha help you? What are some of the greatest needs? What, what could they help you with? Well, as we reach out into what we call a virtual community yeah. with heart and soul and Christ centered, we, we're going to be looking for volunteers 
prayer warriors. We're going to have a prayer line that will be uh, on, the, on the virtual community website. We'll be looking for writers and teachers and articles um, and uh, expanding our mentor program. Yeah. So there are so many opportunities. Obviously, we, it, we're entering into an area where it's costly and that's going to be a, a special need to keep us uh, funded and going in that area. But above all, prayer. Uh, God has given us a vision. We, we were looking up a song that uh, the chorus says, uh, we won't move without you. Yeah, and uh, wow. we, we began in 92 when God showed us his vision for helping single parents. And uh, we're not going to move without him. But this virtual community is coming alive and we're already beginning. Yeah. So prayer warriors, um, folks that have a heart uh, and can have compassion, come alongside non-judgmentally. Um, yeah. Our single moms come from many backgrounds. Uh, and some have been unwed, others are uh, going through separation, uh, maybe ultimately divorce, a lot of pain, yeah. and yet uh, they have God's promise, That's a right. hope and a future. That's right. And uh, come join us. Run I love the race it. With We're going to end on that note. I love it. It's Jeremiah 29 11. Yes. It's just that, yeah, to give people hope and a future. Thank you all Thank for you. sharing this vision, and I want Thank you to you. stay tuned. On the screen, you're going to see how you can reach uh, Shepherd's Village once again. And this is a great ministry. So you can sow in good ground in a lot of different ways. You heard these ladies share all the different ways that you could come alongside and help. And, uh, and above all, I want to say, too, that if all you have the resources to do is to pray and write a check, do those two things, because they can use financial resources and always use prayer. Stay tuned. Here's how you can contact them. Uh, we've given you opportunities today to be a foster care parent. Um, we want you to, to get involved in the foster care system and then also um, would help single moms. There's just so many different ways that, that you can help the body of Christ. And that's what we do here at Bay Focus, try to bring you these opportunities. But we also want you to connect with us, to contact us on Facebook. We're also on YouTube or here online. We, I want to hear from you as well. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. We will see you next week.